Hey guys, New Jersey Piper Ben here. Gonna open up some tobacco today. Uh, trying a new camera setup. I normally do this in my spare bedroom, but I haven't had the air conditioner on in there and it's very hot in there, so uh, just uh, didn't want to sit in there sweating while I was doing this. Uh, gonna open up some tobacco this evening. Gonna try some McBaron HH Pure Virginia. And this tin is from November of 2019. And the standard lovely McBaron gold leaf card insert. Lovely pressed flakes. A lovely odor of I'm getting hay first. Honestly, this is gonna sound weird, but a little bit of molasses. Not getting a lot of bright notes in there. The very again, the very first thing I got was some hay. But it definitely just it, like it, like the name implies, it smells like a uh, a pure Virginia, and I can't even. This flake is so thin and delicate. I, I don't think I can pull out uh, one flake intact. I kind of had to split it and kind of double up the thickness there. But that's focusing for you guys. Yeah, as usual, these MacBaron. Uh, especially the HH lines are very high quality stuff. Uh, beautiful pressed tobacco. And uh, yeah. I'll rub this out on camera for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of flakes to start because these are very thin, delicate flakes. And I just kind of break it in half and then bunch it a little bit. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to do too much to this. I'm going to try to leave some of this intact and not, not rub it out too crazy. I think I just want to try to, you know, like plug this into my pipe and, uh, and not really process it too much. Cause I've, I've primarily just broken up flakes to pretty loose, you know, loose consistency. And this, this is going to break up very easily, but since these are such thin, delicate flakes you've got some strands here that are probably going to uh light pretty easily and 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 do a pretty good smoke so i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave this alone and just let this dry for a little bit all right be right back with you got the uh the rossi note uh, poker I think that's a 411 shape kind of a narrow bowl probably about a uh, between a 5 8 and a 3 quarters closer to 5 8 I'd say just lit it up got some rain just now uh, Pretty decent storm moved through, but it didn't last very long. It's like sprinkling right now, but the yard has been dead for like over a week now. Just haven't had nearly enough rain. Um, I'm kind of cool with that. I'm not a big lawn maintenance guy. I was like, you know, <laughs> if it dies, I don't have to cut it. That's kind of how my brain's wired at least. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But it at least kind of cooled it off a little bit, but it's still like really humid. Oh, uh, happy Independence Day. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm shooting this on the 3rd, but I'm going to post it in the morning. Which is something I commonly do. It's 
in case anybody's wondering if I'm actually sitting in my garage at 7 a.m. I'm not. <laughs> If it's that early, I'm either working sleeping or in that in between phase on a Saturday morning where I'm between you know I'm in my head laying in bed wondering if I want to go ahead and just get up or sleep for another half an hour, which tends to happen a lot on Saturdays. I try to get up early on Sunday because. If I get early, if I get up early on Sunday, I can go to bed fairly early Sunday night and then getting up Monday morning won't be a pain in the butt because I'm an adult and that's what you have to do. So the HH Pure Virginia. Based on the fact this is a tin from late 2019, so it's not even a year old. And what it is, uh, it's about what I expected. It tastes perfectly fine. Um, Pure Virginia is a good name for it. Might have packed it a little tight and again I didn't break those flakes up that much so could be what I'm dealing with <laughs> and the fact that it's very humid right now so probably not ideal smoking conditions but it tastes fine A little bit of sweetness again the you know sort of quintessential hay is is what i'm getting most out of this but interested to see what it tastes like with some age on it which is to be honest with tobaccos like this um base virginias with no toppings anything like that um just high quality pressed tobacco the ideal scenario is uh some years of age i've got some tobaccos like uh oak alley cornell and deal that literally say on the artwork like you know peak age is 10 years so that's telling you you know do your best to let it sit around for a while before you smoke it but yeah, I wanted to see what it would taste like right out of the tin. And it's definitely good, but I can definitely see it getting better. So it's like not even that hot, but I'm just like, again, the humidity. I've got like sweat dripping down my brow. I just want to mention quickly, I love uh, food entertainment, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, Well-produced shows about food. How food ties into culture. And then the geographic setting behind it. So Anthony Bourdain was always one of my favorite people ever. Um, I read his books, watched his earliest shows, which his first show was called A Cook's Tour, through to No Reservations, The Layover, Parts Unknown, and I really think like Parts Unknown is like his, uh, definitely his best series. 
uh, from, you know, again, from a production value standpoint, from a, uh, his maturity and experience POV was definitely feeding the narrative on that show a great deal. You could tell, I mean, he was a well-traveled guy by the time that show came around. So he'd seen and done everything. Um, so yeah, when news of his death came out, it, it hit me. It hit me pretty hard because I just it just wasn't something I was expecting. I don't think anybody was expecting it, and I still don't really know a lot of details around what happened. Obviously, I don't think anybody ever will, other than people that were really close to him, and that's fine. You know, there were things flying around about substance abuse and the fact that he had uh, split with. Asia Argento about maybe a year prior and that hadn't been very uh, healthy or good I guess I, and again this is pure speculation I feel I, I shouldn't even be talking about it but you know you just never know you never know what, 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 what was going down there and depression is obviously a key factor in these things as well But yeah, that was as far as like food programming, like he, he was sort of the, the pinnacle of that in my eyes. Love the uh, John Favreau series on Netflix, uh, Chef, is it Chef? Well, the movie Chef is fantastic, where he has the food truck and he goes on tour with his son and John Leguizamo across the country selling uh cuban sandwiches that's a that's a great movie good food movie um trying to th they, there's a name of th there's a there's a netflix show that it's him hanging out with people cooking food and stuff and I, I, is that all I think, is that also called chef or is it called something else not important um but <laughs> just recently uh like last weekend and then starting again throughout the whole week I've been like addicted to these damn uh, bar stool sports videos of uh, David Portnoy just doing pizza reviews around New York City, and he's been he's traveled to different places. He's come to Jersey, he's gone to Florida, Michigan, other places, um, and all he does he goes to a pizzeria, he gets a pie, he walks outside, and he eats it, and then he gives it a review. It's the simplest formula ever, but something about it just like every one of them is unique um he has guests sometimes you know like some sometimes famous people sometimes you know like just sports people because he's he's a sports guy right barstool sports uh i think he got his big break in sports betting uh made a made a good bit of money and then parlayed that into this whole sort of internet media company thing uh, he's basically just a frat boy. Uh, that's, that's his sort of bread and butter audience is, is kind of like frat guys and, you know, that whole sort of blasé attitude, you know, slightly misogynistic, slightly on the bleeding edge of like, you know, not racism, but like that kind of weird attitude where you, you just think any moment he's going to say something stupid, <laughs> but you know, and to be fair, he's he's clearly an intelligent guy, and he's 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 dripping with charisma. Uh, he's funny for the most part, so not in general, not the type of person I would be attracted to from an entertainment POV at all. Because I'm like, I had no interest in frats and that whole just lifestyle. I don't, I really don't give a damn about sports anymore, honestly. Um, compared to other things, I do give a damn about sports. Just doesn't even register anymore. But those damn videos, I mean, they're somewhere between, like, four and, like, a long one's ten minutes. Like, if there's a guest or somebody happens by on the street that says something, he'll pull them over like, hey, what are you talking about? What are you doing? You want some pizza? He'll just give them some pizza. You know, and half the time, you can kind of tell they're probably homeless or, you know, not all, like, mentally stable or whatever. But that's that's on the streets in New York City. So that, that aspect of it, he kind of lets the outside come into his production sometimes and it's just it tends to be funny and entertaining but uh, i've just never come across a series on youtube that i just i could just sit there watching them for hours 
and it's weird. I should, I'm like, I should be watching YTPC videos and I have been, but <laughs> oh my God, it's just so strange. It's just such a weird, a uh, weird thing. But again, I love food. I love learning about food. Pizza has, pizza's gotta be like the greatest thing. Um, it's gotta be the greatest food ever. I mean, it really does. I mean, what's, what's better than pizza? And it's, it's, it's got basic pizza has a basic makeup, bread, sauce, cheese, but the variation that can exist in that basic makeup is nuts from, you know, where the tomatoes came from, where, what kind of cheese are you using? Is the dough fluffy? Is it crispy? Is it hard? Is it soft? Is it blah, blah. It's just, it's, it's insane. There's like infinite levels of variability within just pizza, just cheese pizza. Don't even, don't even talk about toppings, but just cheese pizza, which is all he eats. He gets the plain slice, the cheese slice. And that's what he judges every time. And, uh, and I believe his reviews and he's had like 500 different slices of pizza at this point. So you can't eat that much pizza and not and really know what you're talking about. So obviously nothing ever gets a 10. He gave like LeBron James pizza place like a 0.1 because he hates LeBron James, <laughs> but nothing, if, if something's really low, like he gave Sabaro like 2.8 or something. Uh, and he even said Sabaro was like, uh, I don't think he said it was better than he thought it was, but some of the stuff like Chuck E. Cheese, he said was better than he thought it was going to be <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and then when COVID-19 hit, he started doing reviews of frozen pizzas in his house. So all these companies were like mailing him frozen pizzas. Some company even mailed him an oven to cook the pizza in like a little tabletop pizza oven. So that was pretty funny, but yeah, um, Barstool Sports, uh, One Bite Pizza Reviews. They're, uh, it's pretty, again, pretty entertaining stuff. My gosh, I've probably watched a hundred of them at this point. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get my pipe lift back up. Good stuff. We'll get better with age. It's in the same vein as like your Sam Goth, Full Virginia Flake, uh, Orly Golden Slice, probably similar, uh, those types of blends. All right. Take care, guys. Be excellent to each other.